spending on a budget. While uncertainty still looms for many, it's important that our personal finances are still intact. Joining us this morning via Zoom to see if we're still on the right path is Thriving Dollars founder, Kenesha Mays. Good morning, Kenesha. Good morning, Dahlia. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, listen. Huh. We budgeted because 2020 was going to be the year of 2020. Way but I, I think, but no, I, I have a saying, I said 2020 not done but empty. <laughs> I love it. I so, love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so let's start, first of all, with our budget. Um, mm -hmm. Assuming we all had one, when you're looking at it now, what are some of the things you have to start looking at trimming down from the budget? Well, in all, in all honesty, what this situation has forced us to do is to take a hard look at everything, not just our finances, but everything. Mm -hmm. And so far, what's been happening is that a lot of people have been realizing like, oh, you know what? I really have been spending a lot of money in areas that were not really that important to me. And so thinking about what to trim down, actually, we have been trimming within the past month, month and a half. A lot of things have just completely gone um, out the door in terms of, for example, or grooming, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of us have turned to self-grooming. So we realize that, oh, maybe I can do some of this stuff myself. I don't really need to be at a salon. Um, transportation has decreased just dramatically, right? A lot less people are on the roads. And so we've already begun to trim down our budget, even though certain other things have increased. For example, your entertainment at home, um, your grocery bill, especially if you have children, but so far, we've already been cutting forcefully, but we've already been cutting back in certain areas. So, so, so a lot of what's happening is, apart from trimming, we're going to have to be juggling things around because, as you said, some things may be less, but some things may be more. Exactly, exactly. Right. Um, so I, want to, I should have backed up a little bit more because usually when we do the budget, the tendency mm -hmm. is to go for the things that are, I guess, consistent. So we're going to put utilities. We're going to put... Right. Lo food and them things. Um, mm -hmm. In times, I, I find though that it's the little things. It's the, yeah. it's the things that may not be so common, but like you pass it and see it and say, huh, but could I buy that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's something we also have to put in the budget. Call it our miscellaneous, mm -hmm. that we, we can't go over that. And isn't that one of the things that we can probably trim at this time? Oh, absolutely. You know what? I've always. Over the years working with clients, I've always put a miscellaneous line item in each of their budgets. Yeah. And they've always been like, I mean, I don't really spend money outside of et cetera, et cetera. But then when we're reviewing, I tend to see the miscellaneous sometimes in the five figures. And I'm like, I thought you didn't spend any money on miscellaneous things. And they're like, I don't, I didn't even realize that it added up as much. So yes, so all these miscellaneous items that you have been spending on. So for example, oh, this is cute and it's only $200 and this is cute, it's only $1,500, this is cute, it's only $500. And then the next thing you know, you're at a steady um, 10000 and you're like, I don't know how I got there, yeah. right? So a lot of those things, those small things, because those small things consistently tend to add up, even in savings, those small amounts consistently, they tend to add up versus the big one-time purchase where you think that's really what's making the dent, but it's always the smaller holes that are really sinking your ship. Yeah, in a time like this, most people jump into immediate survival and not necessarily long-term survival. Yes. And so when we're planning, we're thinking of, well, how are we going to eat today? How are we going to do this? I, mm -hmm. And sometimes we probably don't even think we can save because we said, boy, money, sh money is less. Mm -hmm. um, is it important to include that in the budget, that saving, particularly now, is very important? You know what? I've always been on this train. And if you go to the Thriving Dollars blog, there's an article written years ago, Seven Ways to Hack Your Savings. Um, because I have always believed that it is crucial for you to have a savings. I know the stock market was hot, so everybody was jumping into stocks, and I really want to get into the stock market. But it's important for you to have money put aside for uncertainties. I know we're in a really uncertain period and a lot of people, the people who are feeling the stress of it are really the people who don't have that cushion, who never um, had the opportunity to build that cushion prior to this. So it is critical during this pandemic and afterwards for you to ensure that you have savings in place, not just investments, you need liquid cash to endure things. Because right now we don't even know how long we're going to be enduring this, but you need that cushion to at least soften whatever blows are coming. 
All right, St. Catherine's been on lockdown, and part of that has been um, designated shopping days. Mm -hmm. Boy, every shopping day, it looked like everybody's shopping from scratch all over yes. again. And I yes. understand yes. that there are some people, the way their money comes in, um, mm -hmm. they can't help but shop like that. Today's right. another shopping day. What are some mm -hmm. of the tips <laughs> that you can give my St. Catherine peeps before we head out there today? Um, you know what? What was important before this and moving forward for areas that may experience future lockdowns, you really need to stock up on your essentials, right? So there are certain things like, for example, um, your tin, your canned goods, your, um, your rice, you know, your carbs. You want to stock up on those things that don't really expire as quickly, but you're going to need them to, to endure whatever is coming. Right. So where we have an inclination, oh, you know, we love me kind, you know, Jamaica we say me kind. So I love to have my me kind, so my chicken and my this and my that. But you have to understand that the essentials come first. So for example, you definitely want to ensure that you're stocking up on your rice, your canned goods, your flour, etc. And then so we have like what three, I think it's three shopping days in St. Catherine. So one shopping day, if you don't have all the money to do everything at once, you want to make sure that you get those essentials in first because worse come to worse in the Jamaicans we can't turn and we can make fashion mm -hmm. we can do like a dumpling and butter we can figure it out yeah. right and then when you have a next batch of money that comes in then you want to think about your things that can be frozen so your meats right and you kind of want if you if you're getting money in batches you want to kind of batch process your shopping so essentials frozen goods um toiletries etc etc you definitely just want to have a method that you're you're following to ensure that you're not just just if you if you can avoid going on the road because i don't have any let's say i'm um, chicken mm -hmm. right but I, I do have rice and i do have flour and i do have some canned goods so i can avoid going on the road if chicken is the only thing that i need you get me yeah so also, kind of I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying there's a time i used to work with with, with someone and um we, when we're making drinks for events he literally would pour out per glass like this is yes. it, and he would pour, if it's 50 guests, 50 glasses yes. and say, mix that. And I used to say, sir, that is just so mean. But, but we buy the things we're at home. We mix a big jug of drinks. Um, and because the jug is there, then we drink four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. When we could have had one glass and some water. We buy a whole of chicken. Yeah, we feel nice. we have to fry off the whole chicken. And then mm. we eat it piece, piece, and buy money, and the chicken are left. So as much as we budget our money, we have to also budget um, how we eat and how we cook. Before you go, Kanisha, yeah. in 2013, you said your entire financial life collapsed. Did. Um, didn't know, you didn't know where to start, but you did. And I wanted to, to leave with that word. Um, yeah. What helped you get over that process? Because a lot of people right now are going to be facing that. Um, mm -hmm. what, was, what did it for you? What was critical for me at first was to just kind of overcome the shame that I was feeling because I'd, I'd always been good with money. So for me to have been in that situation in 2013, it felt like such like I was pedaling backwards. So I had to first just get rid of the shame that I was feeling around that and then reached out um, for help. So I asked my mentor, I'm like, I need you to teach me how to be rich because this poor thing, this broke thing, it's... It's not, it's not cutting it, you know? Yeah. And so he, he offered me some resources and I was able to educate myself. And based on that knowledge that I was getting, I was like, wait, why didn't I learn this in school? And that's what um, started the, the trajectory of Thriving Dollars, right? But you definitely just want to overcome all the shame and guilt that you're feeling, right? That's something that keeps a lot of us stuck mm -hmm. because you feel like I'm supposed to have it figured out and I don't. So how, how do I like say, how do I face people, you know? So overcome that first, that's your very first thing. Ask for help, that's your second thing. Third thing, you need to educate yourself. And then not just educate yourself, the fourth thing is that you need to be executing on whatever you're learning. Okay. Thank you so much, Kanisha. Listen, enough people out there struggle. And so, oh, so it's, there's no shame in it, as you've said. It's going to happen to, to most of us at some point in time. Yes. Um, and the reality is we just have to embrace it, learn from it, and move forward. Thank you so yes. much for joining Thank us. It was great talking to you. You too, always. That was Kanisha Mays, founder of Thriving Dollars. Coming up next, we're going to discuss BOJ's decision to suspend dividends payout for the rest of the year. Stay with us.